Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. In this FTH 141 video, we're taking a look at 1.1.1 from uh, the textbook A First Course in Linear Algebra by Kay Cutler. Uh, you can find my notes for this course on my website, tutor.ca, where you can also find information about my private tutoring services. Okay, let's get started. So, graphically, find the point x1, y1, which lies on both lines, x plus 3y equals 1, and 4x minus y equals 3, that is, graph each line and see where they intersect. Okay. So we're looking for the solution to this system of equations, two equations and two unknowns, x and y. And so each of these equations represents a line, if you were to graph it. And so let's actually graph it. And let's see what it looks like. So if I go here, I'm going to use a tool here to help. So we have our xy grid. So we are x-axis, this is our y-axis. Okay. I'm going to graph each of these lines. It's going to be a lot easier to graph if I write them in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So let's do that. This one, I'll rewrite a little bit, 3y um, equals, so it's going to be negative x plus 1, moving the x over, and then y equals, now divide each of these things by 3, so negative a third x plus a third. Okay, so there's the first one in slope-intercept form. Now let's take a look at the next one here. So we have, um, I just moved the y over and the 3 to the other side. So if you see that, it's going to be 4x minus 3 equals y, which is essentially y equals 4x minus 3. In fact, it's identical. I just switched the sides of both things there. Okay, so we have both things in slope-intercept form now. So there's our first one, there's our second one. Those are two lines. And so we're going to graph both these lines and see where they intersect. And that will be the point x1, y1, which lies on both lines. Right, the point which is on both lines at the same time. Okay, so let's take a look here. Um, I'll, start I'll start by graphing this one. It's a little bit easier to graph. So our y-intercept is negative 4, sorry, negative 3, which is here, negative 3. And our slope is 4, which means for every 1 addition in the x, we go up by 4. So our line would look something like this. Right, so I go to the side by 1 and then down by 4 this way, or to the right by 1 and up by 4, either way. Okay, and I'll put one more, just checking all the points are right there. Okay, and then I'm just going to draw a line through it. And there. Should be good. Okay, there's that line. And now let's take a look at this one. It's going to be y equals negative one third x plus a third. So we start at plus a third, which is right here, right, right there. In fact, I'll do it in red. You can see that's the y-intercept. And then we go down by it. So, so for every step, you can think of this in two ways. This slope right here, you can think of this in two ways. You can think of it as for every step, for every step in the in the uh, positive x direction, uh, go down in the y direction by one third. Oops, one third. Right, go down by one third, that's where that negative is. So if I go here, the next point would be right there, down by a third, right? So our next point would be uh, one more step to the right and down by another third. So I'll put it right there. And then again, it'd be maybe right there would be the next point. And then this one would be at negative one. So you see, as, as every step I make in the positive x direction, I go down by a third. You can also think of this slope a different way, which is that, you know, remember that slope, which is m usually, is negative, our, our particular one is negative one over three. You can think of it like that. Or it could also be one over negative three. That'd be a similar thing. And this is rise over run. Over run. So as I go three to the right, right? So if I go one, two, three spaces, I have to go down by a whole negative one. And as you can see, that is that is what I do. I This, this y value here is uh, a third. And this y value here is pretty much negative one plus a third, right? So this is negative one, I go up by a third. So it's a similar thing, but I think it works a little bit better just think of it like this. And that worked for this line here. So if I graph this now, and I guess I'll draw a couple more points here. So going up, I'm gonna put a point right there, that point is approximately negative one, two, yeah, negative one, two thirds. So it'd be negative three, one. Let's see, I'm just going up by a third every time I go one to the left. Okay, so there approximately is our line. I'll, draw, I'll graph that quickly. That's gonna be good. There, that should look great. Okay, so graphically, our lines intersect right there. That point right there, I'll draw maybe in a different color, I'll draw it in orange. So that point right there is, 
the point x1, y1, which lies on both lines, right? Now, this is very hard to see what the actual number is without doing it algebraically, just by graphing. There are examples where um, the, the, line, the lines intersect at a nice like integer or maybe like halfway between um, uh, values here, like maybe at like x is one half and y is one, like there would be a point like that. But this one is not that. It's inter they intersect at a, um, not a nice integer, not something that's easy to see with your, um, just with a drawing. Okay, so then for this purpose, we're gonna look at Desmos here and Desmos is gonna help us out. So if I were to graph these lines, I'd get something pretty similar, right? So, you know, it makes sense also to get something similar because it's the same two lines that I'm graphing. And so I just entered these in Desmos by just writing the original equations. Could have also written the slope intercept format, that'd be the same thing. And if we look now, well, we can see a little bit more, you know, um, numerically what's happening here. Well, our x value is between a half and one and our y value is between, you know, zero and maybe a quarter, right? So it ends up being exactly that number right there. So this is our solution. The point x1, y1, which lies on um, both lines, this line and that line is the point. So I'll write it over here on the side. Let me move this back over. It's going to be the point x1, x1, y1 equals 0 0.769, 0 0.077. And there you go. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it was helpful. I'll see you in the next video.